The words 9-11 are words that will forever be associated with those dreadful events of 19 years ago. We remember the nearly 3,000 people that died that day. and We remember the thousands of lives that have been changed as a result of that day. And we pray for peace. We pray for more hope. We pray for renewal of justice in the world today. Things really did change forever that day. Sometimes we say that and say it rather glibly, but it really was true. The world changed that day. People remember what they were doing as they heard about the attack on the Twin Towers. I was actually in post-ordination training um, with, a, with a group of colleagues that day as we watched the news unfold. I have no idea whether we did any training that day or not, or whether we just watched the news. I don't know. What I do remember is the events unfolding before us on the news. It was a day that really did change history completely. But it also changed it, I think, for the worse. Because the suspicion of others, the need to divide ourselves more, became far more apparent in the world. That suspicion of others has led to all kinds of intolerance. It's led to wars. It's led to terrorism growing. The world is a perhaps more dangerous place than it was 20 years ago. It's a more suspicious place. It's a more divided place, I would say. We need peace. We need that restoration of hope. We need to move forward. And that isn't easy to do. For many people, they're still hurting because of those events. For many people, they're still afraid because of those events and events that have followed since. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. And I believe that we need to turn back to God to seek peace, to seek hope, to seek justice in the world, to bring a possibility of something much better for today and for the future. Something that talks of reconciliation, of renewal, of peace, of hope. Ultimately, of course, of love. Jesus said, love your neighbour. And he meant whoever that neighbour is, love them. Really love them. Love them even when it's difficult to do that. Love them when it's difficult to even like them. Love them when they're very different to us when they believe differently to us, when they look different to us. Love them. Love them whoever they are. There was a radical, transformative message preached by those terrorists 19 years ago. But this message, this message of love, is one that transcends any of those evil messages. It's a message that can really bring renewal to the world. Life-changing, world-changing, History changing renewal. It is something that we as Christians have to work towards. It's something that we as Christians need to continue to pray for. It's something that we as Christians have a responsibility to work for. We work and hope for a world where politics is not personal, where people can disagree but not brand insults at each other. Actually, Politics was more respectful before 19 years ago. Politics seems to have got worse and worse. Politicians, most of the ones I've ever met, seek to do a really good job in very difficult circumstances. And we need good politicians. But the continued personal abuse of them, sometimes I agree, caused by things that they do, is unhelpful. It'll mean we don't get the good politicians. It'll mean that we don't get politicians that we need who will want to talk about peace and hope and reconciliation. Instead, we'll end up with combative people, people looking to defend themselves, people looking to bully through ideologies and thoughts. Lessons have to be learnt. Lessons about peace, about reconciliation, about hope, about renewal. We learn these messages in the pages of the Gospel. We learn these messages as we look at the life of Jesus. We learn these messages 
as we seek to live out the gospel message through our lives, through our words, through our actions. Love your neighbour, Jesus said, the most radical commandment of all in the world, the most radical thing possible. The gospel is about love, not about hate. It's about reconciliation, not about revenge. It's about respect, not intolerance. It's about Jesus. Let's trust him as we move forward. Let's trust him as we seek to be peacemakers, peace bringers, hope bringers to a world that desperately needs those things today. Two short passages from a book I've read recently called Legacy of Love. It's from sermons from the Trinity pulpit in Boston. The first from a man called Sam Lloyd, one of the clergy there in the past. He wrote, God's dream is to create a world of one communion and fellowship in love, justice and compassion. And God calls each of us into the world to participate in that dream by contributing who we uniquely are to this vast tapestry. No one can give what only you or I have to give. And every gift matters. And a prayer from Ted Ferris, another minister there. Oh God, we know that the world we live in is full of hazards, accidents, things that are painful as well as things that are joyful. Help us so to meet whatever comes our way, that we may not only rise above it, but may master the circumstances themselves and show to others a life that is beyond us, the life of Christ that lives in us and enables us to do things that we could never possibly do for ourselves. And so on this day, we remember the tragic events of 19 years ago. We remember those whose lives were changed and the lives changed since as a result of war or terrorism. We pray for hope. We pray for peace. We pray for unity. We pray for healing of the broken hearted, for a binding up of their wounds. And we pray for a greater trust in you, Lord Jesus. You who are the source of of life and hope and peace and the greatest example of love that we can ever look to. Amen.